In recent years, more students in the Boston public schools have been able to compete and expand their learning in the Boston Debate League. The league has multiple divisions, including one in Spanish, and later this year, two of its teams will be competing in national tournaments. To tell us about the league is the executive director, Mike Warsim, and uh, thank you very much for being with us, Mike. Yeah, thanks for having me. First of all, talk about how much this has grown in the Boston public schools recently. Yeah, so we've, I mean, we've been around for 10 years. And when it started, it was just a few volunteers that had uh, debate teams set up as after-school programs at maybe uh, you know three or four schools. But now we're in almost half of the middle and high schools in the city of Austin. So we have 800 students that are debating over the course of the year, coming from 36 schools around the city. Well, I mean, a lot of people might might think. Uh that you know, the only people who should be debating are these kids in exam schools with enormous vocabularies. But, but you know, you've got a lot of people, they're not even full-time learners, some of them. They're maybe English is their second language. How do, you, how do you do this? Yeah, I mean, that's I mean that's exactly the bias, right? People think about debate and these rigorous and meaningful activities, and they say, you know, this is for prep school or this is for a small group of students. But we really believe that this is an activity for all, that, you know, any student who comes to this with commitment is going to get an incredible amount out of it. And so, you know, I think the, the way to build a community that is student-centered, where student voice is the core, is to just make spaces where students can engage with each other. And, you know, they start from wherever their learning is ready to start, and they, they push themselves and forward. And from which grade level are you talking about here? So we're working with middle and high school students, so 12 to 18-year-olds. Um, we have a middle school debate league where students can debate at, start at the novice level, and as they become more uh, fluent in argumentation and communication and critical thinking, they can move up to varsity. In high school, we have you know, the same levels, and so you can move up in the rigor as you get ready and as you build your skill. And like you said, we have both uh, English and Spanish language divisions, so we, we really try to make this an accessible activity that students can come from uh, from all over. I, I can imagine even at middle school students w want to have uh, an, a, a dynamic learning experience, right. to, to put it politely. But, but how do you motivate them to dig in and, and, and do the grunt work for a debate? Yeah, I mean, I think what we've found is that um, generally, both, both after school in the debate league, but also in the work we do in classrooms, I mean, students, students want activities where their voice is heard, and they want spaces where teachers, peers, others respect them for you know, the brilliance they bring to it. So I think a lot of why students commit so much to this is because it's a place where we recognize how talented they are and they have to take the steps themselves. They have to do the heavy lifting of the learning. But when they do, it's rewarded and recognized. And, and that's just a rare thing in educational communities. We're talking with uh, Mike Wasserman from the Boston Debate League, and this is BNN News. Um, Mike, of course, when you're debating, you have to do research to, to prove what you're trying to say. Uh, um, how, how do they go about learning how to do that? So when we start, when students first come to us and join our, our debate league, um, we have some evidence, uh, some research that's kind of put together. We'll give them a big stack of information like this. And we're talking, we're talking college-level text that middle schoolers will start to dive into and engage in. And so there's a lot of scaffolding at the beginning, right? We, we give them information. We say, you know, here's one approach to um, the topic. So this year we're talking about U.S.-China relations. And we put together a lot of information on international trade. And once you get fluent in that, then students can start to do some of their own research. And as they move further, they can start to come up with their own approaches to the topic in, in general. And so they really get more and more independent in the work they're doing. You know, from the sound of what you say here, it, it's, it, it sounds like these students have a chance to do what, what just about every kid wants to do when they're maybe anywhere from, from 12 to 16, is that they want to act like an adult. Yeah, and, and they have, I mean, they have the capacity to, and there are just so few opportunities in our current educational settings that give them the space to do it. You know, if you think about how often in a classroom, right, how much time are students actually the ones talking or leading a discussion? And in, when you imagine the traditional classroom, it's, it's almost no time at all. Well, you've also got to recruit teachers to make this work, too. Tell me about that. Yeah, so we, we recruit teachers. So in all of the 36 schools that we have debate teams at, we have teachers in the building who are the coaches. Um, 
and we do a lot of support and training and building of that community of coaches so that they feel like they can uh, lead the student teams. But, but they themselves are fantastic leaders. And I think what we've found is that, that teachers often feel like this is one of the most rewarding educational experiences they have because it is so dynamic and so interactive and you have a chance to work with a student on a skill they're going to go practice it. They're going to go to a debate tournament and compete, and they'll win or they'll lose. But either way, you come back and you say, okay, let's learn from this. And I can see that filtering into how they conduct their classes, uh, whether it's a science class or history or literature class. Yeah, so we, I, I, I very much believe that the teachers that work with us see the ways that that can be brought into the classroom. And we also actually run our own program. We call it Evidence-Based Argumentation. And it's a teacher professional development um, program, not just for our own coaches, but we'll work with the faculties of entire buildings in Boston. So we'll work with a whole middle school. And for three years, we'll work with all of the teachers around how to take some of those principles of student-led learning, student voice, and make that part of every classroom, science, math, English. Well, uh, some good news about at least a couple of these teams in Boston. We've got some national competition coming up. Yeah, there are a few different national championships for debate because this is an activity that happens around the country. And we have um, middle school students, high school students who have qualified and are traveling across the country to go and represent Boston and compete. Uh, we actually have, um, and we have one team, there's a very elite national championship called the Tournament of Champions. It's held in Kentucky every year. And you have to basically win or make it to the finals of two other national tournaments to get there. And for the first time ever, we have two Boston students that are going. We should mention uh, finally that if any students are interested in uh, taking advantage of this or if any volunteers want to help out, some way they can get in touch? Yeah, absolutely. In both cases, um, we, we are always looking for more students to come and try out the activity of debate. We actually have a summer camp in August where students can come for a week or two uh, to Suffolk, and they can learn more at uh, bostondebate.org. And for volunteers also, we, we will look for about 800 volunteers over the course of the debate season to come and meet students and listen and provide feedback. And the same thing through our website, bostondebate.org. Thank you very much for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Mike Wasserman from the Boston Debate League.